Hello, and welcome to another Experience Points review of a Paizo Inc. product. This time, it's the amazing Beginner Box. I am super excited about this. I'm your host, Kelrick. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me on Twitter, at Cormelon. Or, if you would like to keep up with all things Experience Points, you can find us at EQ Points. One of the newest and most awesome products Paizo has for new Starfinder players is this Beginner Box. I think it's an awesome idea, and I love that it does come with everything you would need to get started. In the box, you'll find dice, because everyone needs dice, and a new to tabletop role-playing games person definitely would need dice. They're pretty simple black ones. There's nothing super, super special about them, but they're a great starter set. There are 24 pawn bases and 87 pawns, or as I call them, standees, whatever you prefer to call them, six player aid cards that are two-sided, six blank character sheets, six pre-generated character sheets, which we'll talk more about, double-sided maps, a hero's handbook, which is the player's handbook that is a real pared-down version of the core rulebook, and a game master's guide, which also a pared-down section of the game master's section of the core rulebook. Plus, in the box I got, there were two goblin munching cards. I don't know how long that's going to last, but with it being so new, you're probably able to get it if you're getting it sometime around June 20. And now we'll talk a little bit more about the pre-generated character sheets and the GM guides. The pre-generated character sheets are particularly cool to me in that there are six characters, and of those six, three are female, two are male, and one is an agendered character. And Paizo uses non-binary gender pronouns. So being conscientious about that is really cool. I also love that when we talk about the female characters, the Besk soldier, Obazaya, and the Lashunta technomancer, Raya, are female. Paizo making a commonly masculine role like soldier and a species that most think of as male, it's not lizard people, making that character female is really great because the only way that art is misgendered or gendered at all is if you look at it and think, oh, that's what this is. So them stating that she is female is really cool and that she's a soldier. So they're sort of turning that on its head, which I really appreciate. Navasi, the, the envoy, is a space pirate. Again, a role that has rarely been portrayed as a woman, which is awesome. Quig, the Yusoki mechanic, is a pretty standard character, and they're male. And Keskodai, the Shirin male, is, myst is a mystic, which is a priest healer slash support character. And having a soldier as female and a support class slash healer as a male is a nice flipping of that straight binary of expectations. So I'm actually a really big fan of how they did that. Isef, or Isef, the android is an operative and is a pretty cool character in general like operatives are just really powerful and they have cool abilities but it is frustrating that once again a non-binary character is an android while i'm glad that the female characters outnumber the male and that there is a non-binary character i would have loved for the non-binary character to have been human for a change because a lot of the feedback i get from ace people that i know have really said that it's it's dehumanizing to always have you or the def one of the defining parts of yourself not obviously the defining part but one of them as alien or android or non-human is a thing but paizo does I, I, is not a huge criticism of paizo it's just here's a thing that i notice and you know as we are lgbt focused here that is something that i really think needs to be brought up so when we talk about the Hero's Handbook, I love that the first example has two female and the non-binary characters only. It's a great way of welcoming new players in a subtle way. I think most men who read this wouldn't even notice unless they have an axe to grind against inclusion. And I don't think children would notice at all. For LGBTQIA folks and women, it really jumps right out as a welcoming introduction though. Like it, it's very front and center and I think most of us notice it. We're like, oh, that's really cool. Still, not super happy with the different species being called races, but I do think that when 
But I do like when the Sharon are introduced, the second thing that's mentioned is that they have three genders. I do notice that male is listed first, and it would be cool to see the designations in alphabetical order, maybe. But that's a small issue for me next to all of the good inclusive content Starfinder has. I mean, it's really, really fantastic. There is there is the naming of the third Sheeran gender, which is Host, that has me scratching my head a little bit. I'm not really sure what a better name would be. I'd love to hear from my non-binary uh, community members what they think a good name for the third insectoid species gender would be. That would be super awesome, and maybe some of that feedback would get back to Paizo, and they may take it into account. Who knows? At the very least, they'd be getting positive. They'd be getting the feedback that people are interested in the game, love the game, appreciate the inclusiveness, and here are some tools to make it even more, which would be kind of cool. One of the best things these books do is show how you can introduce species, classes, themes in a completely gender neutral way. The only place gender expectations can be introduced is with the drawings slash images included. And for LGBTQIA folks, it is much easier to see yourself in any of these roles because of it. I truly appreciate this. And it's definitely a huge reason that I am such a fan of Starfinder. Starfinder is really one of the games that makes me the most happy to play. I love TTRPGs in all sorts and flavors, but the inclusivity that Paizo brings to the table really just is, it just makes me feel so welcomed and positive with the game that I love it. All of the story ideas on page 27 of the GM's guide are completely non-gendered, so there's no expectation of who, had, who would have to do what or how the role would have to be played, which is really nice for those people who really want to dive into RP. All of these points are to say that at Experience Points, we love playing Starfinder. It's a wonderful game that we really enjoy. I'm very pleased with how much we So with all that said, this beginner box really illustrates how, how much work Paizo is putting into inclusivity as a cornerstone of their gaming systems. They do a lot of work on making sure that the descriptions are non-gendered, or if they gender a pre-generated character, they balance the binary genders, and at least in the beginner box, weigh the split towards including female characters rather than having a gendered, than having the agender character count as not male. So balancing the characters with that mentality is really I highly recommend checking out both the game and the beginner box to get started. It's a great value and introduction. That's my two cents on the beginner box for Starfinder. I hope you check it and experience points out. You can find our latest episodes linked on our website, www.experiencepoints.com, and watch us live every other Saturday on Twitch starting June 1st, 2019. If you tune into us playing, you could win this very beginner box, as we'll be giving it away during one of our next two sessions for Pride Month. Until next time.